Brandon's good work go to waste. <laughs> good, that's generous. <laughs> oh, fuck off. I know you can write. <clears throat> and now it's all on camera, so if you fuck up, it's your fault. Well, shit. Well, we're here with Theros. Uh, we're. This is going to be a less of a session one and more of like a session 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.2, whatever the fuck Brandon wants to keep calling it. You know, the Kingdom Hearts-esque method of naming things. Depends how far we get. Yeah, we were all very excited about Theros, and Brandon was like, oh, I'll run Theros, yar. And so we're running Theros, and... Uh, He's adapted an older adventure for us, or like a new adventure off a of DM's guild. I'm not sure which. Um, it's new. It's new. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and we're we took so long to get our character concepts in that most of us are only finishing our sheets today. So, I mean, let's see here. So, Isaac, you are playing. Trailing off on purpose. Make make me go last. I'm picking a feet. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, I'm playing a uh, Gallus of Akros. I'm playing basically a Spartan warrior, um, human fighter, gonna be a battle master. He's lawful neutral, uh, soldier background, fun stuff. Uh, he kicks so much ass in a fight uh, that whenever he was basically supposed to die, uh, the god of victory, uh, Eros, I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced, um, blessed him and like healed his wounds. And now his wounds are really, really. Uh, they're not keen on undoing the god's work, so he just heals from wounds extraordinarily fast. And Josh. One second. <laughs> See, what? I'm the only one who fucking did. Okay, uh, right. yeah, no, I've got everything ready to go. I just had to, I, there was beeps going on and I'm updating. Okay, we're ready to go. Uh, so I'm playing Mungark Thunder Fury. Uh, he's a game. Minotaur Barbarian. And uh, Mungark uh, is from a small village uh, outside of, like, the polis run by the, the Minotaurs. Um, and he was, his village was attacked by a, um, by a Hydra. He managed to hold the Hydra off and actually ended up defeating it, but at the cost of his own life. Um, Luckily for him, Mogus was watching and was so pleased with the fight and the slaughter and the blood and everything that he decided to bring Mungark back from uh, the edge of death uh, as one of his own champions. God damn it. Yeah. So, so the, the really funny thing is that Mogus is the twin god of Iroas. And they're both gods of war, but one of them is like, you know, Iroas is like, I'm the good guy, right? And Mogus is very much not the bad guy, or very much not the good guy. He's uh, uh, the lord of blood and slaughter, so <laughs> we are not we are not good. Uh, we are not a good boy. Um, and so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, us being like polar opposites on the fucking story. We're the oh, same, boy. but different. That's okay. You're all heroes, and fate tends to lump them together, whether they like it or not. Do we do we settle on one? Yeah, no, I'm good. Right, well, tell us about uh, your your moist boy. Uh, all right. Please don't I say am, that. <laughs> I'm playing a uh, Klonos Gilgarain. Uh, he is going to be a Triton Paladin. Um, from the underwater city of Ocelor. I posted that in the group chat so you have spelling. Got it. Uh, but, um, basically, he is on... Uh, he is a steward for the king of Ocelor uh, that has been tasked... Uh, <laughs> that has been tasked uh, for to basically go to the the above world because they have the well, the surface uh because the city of Ocelor has remained uh wildly wildly uh secret not necessarily secret but secluded that's the word I'm looking for right secluded and so basically the the new king of Ocelor has decided that they need to put out some feelers and 
to determine whether or not incorporating and um, mingling with the, the rest of the world is worthwhile. So he has uh, tasked a select few Triton uh, stewards from the city to um, observe the surface world. Nice. Um, Rad, and I will be taking the role of all of the gods. Yeah. Because <laughs> I am finally going to DM something here. Yeah. There's, there's only like... What, 10, 15, 16, there's, 17-ish gods? 18? There's one for every double color combination and then one for every single combination. Well, so combination. Well, there's I, actually two for some of them. Uh, well, there, there's two for one of them, sorry. Uh, I think so it's 15 in the current canon. I shouldn't have like made a statement with a literal magic player in the, gra in the game. Well, all right, now let me count because there's... 10 or 5 for the normal color pairs. There are 10 color pair uh or 5 for the normal single colors, 10 for the color pairing, so that's 15. There's one more that they introduced in the newest set. It's 16, that's my final answer. Uh 17, but one of them was quickly slain, so yes, yeah, 16 correct. Back. <laughs> the cacophony god of cities was quickly slain. Oh um, yeah, I did I am not that deep. It's fine. Um Anyway, uh, one cool thing about the Theros, I I'm assuming this is in the book and not, like, just something that Brandon, like, um, made up on the spot. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, whatever. Um, is that, uh, in, addition, <laughs> in addition to all the things we do with character creation, all the normal stuff we do, including how we have the house rule of level one feet, um, there's also the, uh, the supernatural gifts uh, section of Theros, which is a really cool part of... Uh, this source book, the new mythic mythic odyssey, ah, mythic odysseys of mythic odysseys of Theros, um, that came out where basically at character creation you choose uh, something down a list that makes your character larger than life, basically making your own Greek mythical hero. Uh, for example, my character Gallus has the unscarred supernatural gift, which for me that means that. Um, he's incredibly difficult to kill. It gives me the trait where uh, when I take damage, I can use a reaction to roll a d12 and add my con mod to it. Um, and stuff like that. And Josh, you said you took the, the faded one? Um, no, I took uh, heroic. So great deeds lie in your future, and it will take extra extraordinary effort to kill you before you accomplish those deeds. Choose a roll of random destiny using the blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, defy death. Uh, I have advantage on death saving throws and hard to kill when uh, when I'm reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, I can drop to one hit point instead. So it's like the... And I can do that once every uh, once every uh, long, long rest. rest. So it's like the uh, the half-orc racial feature. And Isaac, which Kinda, one do you yeah. choose? I chose lifelong companion and um, it says, behind many heroes is another hero whose greatness comes from the support and love they offer. Aww. Octos, yeah. Octos had his beloved Pyrenees. Uh, Pyrenees. I think it's Pyrenees. Pyrenees. Renata Iridium. was accompanied. Okay. Renata was accompanied by her service, Kyrados, and Siona sailed with her devoted crew. Like these partners, you are great and make others great. Consider the companion relationship table when determining your leg legendary connection. Any relationship with another player's character requires that player's consent. Uh, so that's going to be interesting because a lot of those things are like uh, another character is your brother or another character is your 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 father or or you like I'll be your daddy or you observed, <laughs> or you observed or you observed the character and admired them and and basically like you know, went full simp and may ask them to take you on as an apprentice or something like that. So that's going to be something that we kind of have to figure out what my connections to you guys are because the table doesn't really apply given the fact that this is my first go to the, the surface world. Right. We yeah, can but... feel that one out. I'm exactly, not yeah. We can, yeah, we can... it's, yeah, it's nothing that I'm like, I'm just saying it's some feel it out. It's less of the, I mean, I'm basically, I'm because, I mean, my character build is mostly going to be uh, tank support, pseudo healer, so I'm not. So I mean, I'm I'm here to make you guys great again. 
<laughs> we just, Please don't. I love how every <laughs> I love how everything we did was doubling down on you cannot kill us. So I can't wait to see what you do to try and kill us. Don't worry, I have plenty of tools at my disposal. <laughs> so my my little uh, traits that I can do, I have a boon aura. So my al- your allies within five feet of you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. And the other one is companion protection. When a creature you can see within five feet of you is hit by an attack roll, you can use your reaction to cause it to hit you instead. Once you use this trait, you can't do so until you finish a long rest. Dope. So I can so take since, I can take a bullet for you. Since well, I'm not familiar with this rule set and stuff yet, you guys are gonna have to keep me abreast of like, no, no, I had this boon thing going on or whatever the hell because I no 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 I have me. this I I had no. cast Mordenkai's magical watchdog. Yeah, no, no 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 I ha- I have this thing that says I can't die. That's literally how it. Re- <laughs> yeah, sorry man, it's it's in the rules. Just, you can read, just read straight the up says you can't die. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's that's kind of where I'm at, right? Like, that's where both of us are at, man. It's a uh, it, you, you. It's like when you get there, it's like nope, and I'm just hard to get there. The sad thing is, like between all of our con, this is like our pool of hit points is still probably more than most of our campaigns that are currently sitting in their pool of hit points. <laughs> oh yeah, we're at least at, like forty at this point at level yeah, one. Cause so because I, I have fifteen, I have fifteen as well. I have 16, so yeah, there I'm you just, go. I'm just going to jump in, okay? I made a character. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, yeah. doing, we're doing this week on, week off thing so you can get your schoolwork done, dude. Yeah, I dropped a class. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's cool. I just figured I'd come in here and bother you guys. I figured. And listen to your, <laughs> listen to your game. <laughs> that's no fine, worries. man. Alright, so, okay. yeah, take it that, away. That, that's all our characters laid out. Uh, so here's our little, uh, shoot little prologue thing I have just to bring all the characters together before we set you out on your grand adventure. Uh, so here we are, the prologue, the best medicine. Adventurers are renowned for their constitutions. I mean, since when in any of your campaigns have you, uh, taken sick days? But <laughs> everyone, even heroes, need to see a physician at some point. Uh, as it so happens, the three of you needed to get something examined or treated. Uh, everyone can roll me a d6. Are we getting prostate exams? Is that how this <laughs> campaign is starting? You might very well. <laughs> how, how many po- How many roll for polyp count? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a crit, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, I also rolled a six. I got a three. So we got... Okay. I'll start with Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaac, uh, not long after you foray onto the surface, um, I'm getting like my my shots when you go to like a foreign country or something. But... <laughs> <laughs> Ruff, uh, not long after you foray onto the surface, you found a a painful boil in an uncomfortable place. So you you naturally uh, sought out someone to take care of that. Uh, Tyler, what'd you get, buddy? I got a six. Oh, yours is the best. You're a common cold. Hi. <laughs> you you just the two beefy it's... boys are meeting over a shared common cold. Yeah, real shit. I hate this. <laughs> How do we do this, dude? <laughs> you know, I have to say, some of the you guys got the best ones because the other ones were so much more dignified. But no, you just got no a boil and it's a fucking man cold. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so you guys were having trouble coping, and whatever the nature, uh, you each visited a physician of some stripe uh, in one of the poleis. And this Most... is a this is ancient Greece level, so like you know, common cold is like a death sentence to us. If you want to, if it you want to be cool be. about it. Uh, so more than likely, you guys ended up in Melitis. Um found yourself a clinic you were given a potion uh i suppose given the naivety of uh our sea dwelling boy and our minotaur that wouldn't have been uh probably wouldn't have raised too much concern that they're just like here drink this um if you wanted to question them further on it they would say it's we, we just need to 
uh, dull the pain for this procedure. Regardless, uh, you made your choice poorly, and you drank it, and everything went black. And you wake up in a cave. You are in a cave. All three of us are? All three of you are in a cave. It is dry. It's not damp or dank by any means. It's a dry, cool cave. Um, you're surrounded by iron bars. They're thin, and they're... I mean, decently spaced apart. It's not like a super secure cage, but it's a fucking cage, okay? <laughs> um, nothing much in here. There is a wooden bowl on the floor of your uh, cage, and there's a crust of bread. Looking uh. around, there are about six other cages in here. Uh, most of them are unoccupied. Save for, yeah. You know, there's a minotaur in here. And there's a human, and there is a triton. And I'm assuming we do not have gear. No, you are stripped down to your undies, unless you don't wear any. Do I still have the boil? Uh, to your surprise, whatever conditions it was that you guys had, they're gone. Whether they've been treated or not, the. the they're ailing you no longer. Nice. You guys oh, go Monkark isn't sure how he got here, but he is feeling a little peckish. Yeah, it's like all crust, the bread that's in front of you. Uh, I'm not sure Monkark the Minotaur cares about that. Okay. Sorry. This, this sandwich is much, much less than I'm used to. You surface dwellers have a very interesting taste in cuisine, and I eat it all. Ugh. That's talk about a rough night. Ugh. Well, I've got a headache, but that certainly beats having the damn cold. How long have we been in here? Uh, given that you were unconscious when you were brought in here, you couldn't say for an exact passage of time, but. Since you've been conscious, it's been maybe five or ten minutes. Hmm. So, we're in these cages. Uh, how, how are those bars looking? They look thin. You couldn't say whether they're weak or strong, but they're thin, which is promising in and of itself. I would like to... Here's the, here's the first one, two, three strength check. Yeah, I, I, would like to, I would like to test them with my big old Spartan muscles. Also, oh yeah, go for it. And by the way, if we're talking about wearing undies or not, my dude's like a fucking fantasy Spartan. Of course he's not. Um, so that is a 14 on the strength. 14. Uh, you grunt, and you sweat, and you're struggling against the bars, and you feel like they're shaking, and you might be making some progress, but they don't bend to any respectable degree. Oh, move away, puny man. Watch how, watch how Mungard er, does it. And <laughs> I, I think Mungard is going to take his own shot Go this time. It. You're welcome. Just... You're welcome for loosening it up first. Oh, if I wasn't clear, uh, you're in separate uh, cages. Mungard rolled a twelve. Eh. Same deal. You try. It doesn't go so well. All right, fellows. Let us. Let me take a shot. Go for it. Uh, so that's a nat 20. The first roll of the game is a nat 20. So 22. Okay. Uh, the Triton, of all people, puts his hands together, just works some sweat into his palms, and grabs the bars of his cage and rips and... The bars give away. Um, you're able to pull them apart, and there's enough room that you could reasonably squeeze out of the cage here. I'm gonna go through and uh, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go through and be like, well, nice meeting you, gent. I'll, I'll be on my way. <laughs> well, all right. Now hold on. That we don't know exactly who. 
uh, put us all in here. Sure you want to be doting off by yourself? Uh, from where I see it, we're all in prison. We all did something. I don't know what you did. You don't know what I did. We all could be bad people. I know I can vouch for myself and myself alone. If we're still in Melitus, I haven't done anything to get thrown into a Miletian prison. Something else is That doesn't here. inspire much confidence that you have to preface by you haven't done anything here. What can I say? We've all got story paths. I'm sure you've done some stuff back in your home, wherever that is. What you I did was... Righteously climbing the ranks to the one of the most respected advisors to the king? Yes, I've done some things. Well, we can be certain that this wasn't politically motivated if all of us are in here for the same reasons. Only one of us is a standout. You're obviously more the valuable type than uh, me and the Minotaur. He kind of nods at, uh, what was his name again? Mungark. Mungark. I've got to change the names real quick. But, <laughs> fuck Watch yeah. what you say, little man. Mungark could get, uh, get his hands on you and you'll be sorry. Well, from where I see it, you aren't getting your hands on anything except those bars, friend. I've rustled him. Mungark, mid- <laughs> I've missed. If Mungark, if Mungark wanted, he could actually reach for the bars, but as close as he could get would be to touch the bars of uh, of Gallus's cage. I've wrestled bigger things than you in the Eroan games. Uh, everyone, give me a perception check, please. Ooh. That is a 13. I got an 18. Well, mine will not be good. 7. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to give everyone the layout of the room here first, and then we'll get to the actual perceptible things. Uh, so, this room is roughly 25 feet by 25 feet. It's a natural stone cavern. Um, to the west, there is... A pile of rocks. Uh, it looks like it may once have been a passage, but it's since been blocked off. Uh, the only way out of this room is a tunnel leading north. And, okay, with an 18, um, you hear footsteps echoing down the tunnel towards this room. Hmm. Word to the wise, you might want to get back in your cage and wait this one out. Unless you want to lend both of us a hand, we can help you take out whoever's coming. Fine. Do I see any keys or any way to get them out? Not at present, no. Just come work on the bar at the same time as me. Yep, let's do that. Shall we do another strength or... Uh, Gallus can give me one with advantage since he's being held. Excellent. Uh, probably not that one. It's a 19. Okay. With the two of you working away at it, um, and previous efforts you've made, you were able to bend enough metal that you can slip out. I would like to move over and help Mungark. Okay. It's at this point that whoever was uh, stepping into the cavern here uh, is now in sight. It's a scrawny looking man uh, with a terrible, almost tonsure haircut. Uh, He's basically wearing rags, but he's carrying a wooden bucket with a ladle. And he steps into the room and he sees the two of you uh, working on Mungark's bars. And he freezes. Oh. Hello, friend. I believe there's been a misunderstanding. I'm gonna grab him. Uh, <laughs> yes. A very big misunderstanding. <laughs> Make me an athletic roll. Don't mind if I do. Uh, 14 plus... 19. Uh, that's 19 again. Okay. He drops the bucket and fresh water pours out onto the floor of the cave. Keys, uh, little tear, as a single tear t- rolls down Clonos's face, <laughs> <laughs> as he is immediately tackled. I, I'm not. I'm not tackling him. I'm grabbing him by the scruff of his neck. Okay. Well, Gallus is, by the way, six foot five. So yeah. 
like lifting him off the ground if possible and just be like keys little man keys and answers oh he's scrawny so he's easily wrenched up off the ground and I imagine Mungard's just got the bars of his cage he's just shaking like We got, um, so, yeah, no, we literally got one guy, like, holding up, like, keys. I'm doing the, hold on, this is a misunderstanding. Meanwhile, we have a minotaur shaking its cage like an animal. Yeah. This is terrifying. He looks down at you, uh, gaping, with buck teeth pointing out from his lips. My eyes are up here. <laughs> I know well, I'm packing, down but this where, is ridiculous. Down from where he's being held. He's not interested <laughs> in your junk. He's just terrified right now. Um... Intimidation roll? Yes, please. Well, it's a good thing I'm proficient in that. Uh, God damn, I need to stop scrolling away from all my shit that I need to roll for. Uh, it's a 13. Uh, so there's a ring with keys on it jangling uh, at his waist on a rope belt. And yet, even though you're six foot five. And you've got him by the scruff of the neck. He shakes his head and says, I, I, I can't. I, 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 he wouldn't like that. And it's clear that he's, as intimidating as you are, he's more afraid of someone else. Interesting. Well, what's he going to do? I'm going to yoink his keys. Uh, easily done. We're going to go help uh, Mungark. Are you putting the boy down? Can I can I like hold him up with one hand and manipulate oh, the keys with the other hand? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Uh, Mungark, the door to your cell swings open easily. Looks like as... they put you in the stout, the sturdiest one. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. All should fear the Mungark. Five guesses Little what man. your name is. Answer. Answer me some questions, little man. Answer uh, me these questions three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, the little man will continue shaking, uh, but he doesn't shake his head. He seems like he might be willing to listen. All right. Uh, where are we? You're in a cave. All right, I guess. And he, like, fake pulls out, like, a note, a little notepad and puts, single cave on surface world. <laughs> he and takes he out, says it just like that. He takes out a notepad. Where was he keeping it? Well, no, he's just writing on his hand. Like, he's being okay. uh, very sarcastic. <laughs> like, he just, yeah, he's just imaginary, like, you know, all right, friend, one more time. Where are we? Okay, you're under... Under under the city. Hmm. What exactly is Mungart doing under the city? I I don't know. I was just bringing you water. I don't know what it is that they do here. Well, it seems that we're tapped out for answers down here. Might as well try elsewhere. Just put him it's... down. Gently. I wouldn't even need to. I wouldn't even need to make an insight roll to know that he's very clearly not letting on as much as he could. He's clearly afraid of what might happen if he's forthcoming with everything. Uh, so another question. Uh, I'm not super accustomed to uh, walking so scantily. Where would our belongings be? I. Uh... Okay, I'm going to give you guys this one because he's... You haven't beaten him yet, so... I was gonna say, this, is, this is the early on part best where we case. decide... We decide whether we're evil or not. Yeah, this is the best case scenario for this dude, and he better know it. There... There are some small... Uh, crannies... Uh, further ahead in the cave. If you just go through that tunnel... And, and you turn left... And and I think it's, it's either on the right or the left. There's there's a little space. It should have a, a trunk. It should have your things in it. All right. And now, my friend, we will give you a gift. This gift is called 
Plausible deniability. Put him in the cage. Oh my god. Gladly. It's gonna go ahead and put him down gently in the cage. Make sure he has the water and the bread. And go ahead and close it. Yeah, there was a little bit of water that wasn't totally spilled out of the bucket. So he's... Yeah. He's got it. Alright, let's be off. Feeling a little drafty. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, the stretch of the tunnel ahead is lit by a single torch that's bracketed on the wall. Uh, oh, yeah, that's fun. No one has dark vision in the party. <laughs> nope. I do. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Oh, okay. That does make um, sense. And this room as well, I should mention, has... Uh, has a bracketed torch on the north wall and one on the south wall, so it's it's dim in here, but, I mean, you can see well enough. How, how tight, like, is it bracketed to the wall? Like, can I just, like, pluck the torch off? Oh, yeah, you can easily pull it up and out of the, the bracket. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Doink. Okay. Oh, torch. Light acquired. Right. Uh, what did he say about our belongings again? It was in a little uh, alcove to the to the left. Little yeah, crannies he said up he... and to the left. Got it. He said left or right. But yes, there's a little alcove somewhere. Okay. Well, then I think it's the absolute first thing we should do. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Can someone cue up music? I'm going to regret asking this already. Oh, I'll just... Do some city. Mulatto butts! Mulatto butts! <laughs> Let's play this long city playlist that I have. Good enough. That'll do. Okay. You mean I can't play future? <laughs> no. We save that for a boss beam, fight. Beam, 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 beam. So, uh, the nameless wastrel guy is in the cell. Uh, there's just a tunnel up to the north, unless you want to try to burrow through the rocks to the west. Uh, huh. So the... L I'm just, uh, y you know me, I'm terrible with, like, you know, uh, directions and shit like that, but... So we went, got our stuff already, and... No, no we didn't okay. get your stuff, yeah. You okay. got a torch. Okay, I thought we were, like, going all the way down. So the only other way out besides the way we've tried is the stack of rocks. I mean, you could you could go northeast, down the tunnel, further into the cave, which is apparently where the uh, where your stuff was stored away. That Yeah, that seems like the best option. Yeah, Mungark is going to look at the other two and go, Little one should follow Mungark. Mungark is very strong. We'll get you safely out of here just gonna turn and head down the hallway he shrugs and okay. doesn't he keeps his torch so the tunnel goes for about 30 feet opens up into a, a slightly larger room which immediately peels off into another tunnel heading west so turning left from there uh you find there's a bit of a cross section uh there are alcoves there's one to your immediate left uh, and there are two up ahead on the left and right. But uh, opposite the alcove where stuff is supposedly, there's also a tunnel that leads off into darkness. And it looks like there's uh, more further ahead past the alcoves. Well, I'm going to go check where he said our stuff was then. Alcove number one. Uh, it looks like just a natural little cave formation that there's just a bit of, like, the wall that's kind of worn away here. Uh, and there's a trunk, and it is not locked. And it has all your shit in it. All right, we're geared. Hell yeah. I That's smash it. Um? I'm kidding. <laughs> Best tutorial ever. We got all our shit. <gasps> Goodness. I'm gonna don his... It's it's chainmail and text, but I'm sure it's like some kind of like Spartan bullshit. It's like you know muscle the muscle plate things or whatever. Yeah, Mungark reaches down and grabs his battle axe. Oh yeah, that's right, unarmored uh unarmored armor. 
Ar- unarmored defense. Wow, way to fucking go, Tyler. Unarmored armor. Uh. Yeah, it's clear to you, given how accessible this is, that either you've been severely underestimated and or whoever's behind all this is very new to this sort of thing. So, it's it's kind of like, yeah, they, hmm. Or both. Well, something tells me they didn't look at the size of my muscles or the size of his, and he jerks a finger at Mungark before they locked us up. Mungark would find the ones that locked us up here and send them to speak with Mogus. Yeah, for once I agree with you. And, like, swing his trident around a little bit and it's like, we might as well go make them answer for it. So, there's two alcoves just up ahead a couple feet that just kind of peeking around the corner looks like they have crates in them. Uh, then there's uh, the dark tunnel to the north, and then it looks like this tunnel continues off to the west. I think we should check the other alcoves first. Okay. And then go down the tunnel. So, walking ahead just a few feet, yep, there are two more alcoves, uh, very similar in size and shape to the one that your stuff was in. Uh, they have crates, which are is this Dragon Age music? It might be. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, anyway, uh, crates. Sealed crates. Well, in classic video game style, Mungark, do you want a break? Mungark will oblige, and he'll, <laughs> he'll make an attack. <laughs> That's the name the, of the episode the crates, now, by I the guess. way. Mungark will oblige? Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's a big word. Mungark's gonna use his, uh... Like letters. Mungark socially advanced in <laughs> Mungark not appreciate your preconceptions of minotaurs. <laughs> yeah, you can just give me an attack roll just to see how quickly and efficiently this is done. It Mungark... won't be hard, it's just a matter of how clean is it done. Mungark well, we got a 12, find... so... <laughs> Mungark find your statements shallow and pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So it'll it'll take a couple whacks with your axe, uh, but you you chop open the crate. Um, Whoa there, buddy. Down, killer. Well, hold on, there <laughs> might be something nice in the box. Mungark snorts. Uh, there's straw, first of all, just packing straw. Uh, and it looks like there's something carved from marble inside the crate. Uh, on further inspection, it is a carving. Uh, it's It's just gaudy art. Is what it is. What is it depicting? Uh, it is depicting snakes. Hmm. Just, just snakes. Just snakes on marble. Snake. Snake. <laughs> well, snakes. Uh, there, there are two very big snake things that you don't want to run into in Greek mythology. And I'm trying not to meta, but also I feel like we know about hydras and gorgons. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, um, and then there's crates uh, on the opposite side, of, like the the other alcove. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll go and do the same thing as Mungark, making a tag of his crates. Uh, that is a scroll back up to the top because I keep on scrolling down to the second page for some reason. So using my one of my hand axes to chop it up, that's a twenty three to hit. Okay. You basically just hit a hinge on the crate and it just pops right open. Finesse. Um, more packing straw. And this one has a variety of like brass kind of urns. Um, they're also uh, painted with just like a black ink or something. And uh, these ones are depicting it looks like hmm. Uh, how to describe it's that Greek style of art where you just got uh, let's see you mean like you know the black on the urns and stuff like that yeah yeah yep yeah. uh, and it looks like it's depicting uh, healers practicing medicine it's called black figure pottery 
is what you're looking for. Black figure pottery. Okay, fancy. Anyway, uh, just that with more of the theme of uh, medicine, healing, wise men, that sort of crap. Uh, so in total, between the two sets of crates, you have a collection of uh, marble carvings and a collection of brass urns, uh, each worth 25 gold each. I was about to say we're not taking these things, but man, fuck. Um, there's nothing but a bunch of decorations down here. Almost makes you wonder if we're in someone's basement. <laughs> this is just where they put all their nice little things while the in-laws are visiting. Hmm. It's a very countrified Spartan voice you got going on. I'm there. trying not to do it. It's I'm, I'm fresh off of being those Dwergar, you see. Uh, yeah, fair, fair, fair. Okay. He is so a there's, So there is the dark tunnel that is opposite the alcove that had your shit in it. And then this tunnel continues on further ahead, and it is lit. It's Damn. lit, ma'am. <laughs> so uh, what's it going to be? Dark passage or a light passage? My vote just for getting out of here and, like, figuring out what's going on, I feel like light is the better way to go, but I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, no. That way looks like it... Nope, not Cinderous, sorry. That way looks like it leads to the light. Let's go that way, friends. Munger just snorts and wants that way. You're, you're gonna have okay. to, like, work on your snort sound effect, because I like... expect... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly you're a centaur. Yeah, let's Damn. let's go down the the light hallway. Okay, what is everyone's passive perception? Thirteen. Um, that's a great question. Mine is ten. Thirteen. Thirteen. Two thirteens and a ten. Okay. Uh, fortunately, because you have some of dark vision. Uh, 13 will be good enough for uh, Klonos. Um, while the Minotaur and the human don't seem to notice, uh, this tunnel is a T-section of sorts. Like, it, the way you were traveling, it curved a bit, so it might be easy to miss for those without dark vision, but it also turns off to the left in addition to turning off to the right. Uh, the left does not appear lit. The right is. Ah, uh, there... There's another path. That just... Just up that way. But I, I say we continue on the lit... The lit path. Yeah, this conflicts between my desperate desire to, uh... Go to the right first thing in dungeons. Um... Versus, yes, we're proceeding past the light... Uh, path, but yeah, that makes sense. I think we're going to have a light path. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you proceed about ten more feet when you can see uh, to your immediate left there is just a short passageway and there is a separate cavern room that has light and noise coming from it. And... Huh, okay. Um, nothing is happening as of yet. What but kind of noise? Like room people, looks, people, looks, looks like, like people noises or cave yes. noises? People noises. It looks like it's furnished. You don't see anyone immediately inside yet, unless you were to maybe step closer. But you can hear talking. Hmm. I step in. Yeah, I was about to say, well, like, we could try to be stealthy, but, like, let's yeah, look at... Let, let's, we're let's all look wearing at our chain armor. Yeah, we're all wearing, yeah. like, at least chain armor, or we're a minotaur. Like, let's just look at our <laughs> team comp and ask ourselves, do we really want to try to be stealthy, or we just want to say fuck it and be heroes? I step I, in. I need to make some music playlists, because this doesn't quite fit with the fight. It's okay. You need um, fight music? I got you for fight music, but... Oh, no, I, I got I got some stuff in reserve here, but... And uh, okay. I'll step in and be like, Hello, friends! Uh, I'm wondering if you could direct me to the surface. So you step into the room, 
Uh, there's some modest furnishings in here. There's a couple wooden tables. There's some candlesticks with light going. Uh, there's plain looking bunks and chairs. And on a couple of the bunks, there's a total of four guys just kind of sitting around. Um, whatever the hell they were talking about, you have their attention now. Uh, they're wearing... Let's see, what are they wearing? They're and... wearing kind of a hodgepodge of leather armor. Uh, and a couple of them are wearing masks. Um... They're very mismatched, though. Uh, one of them is white and has, like, uh, fangs painted on it. The other one is, like, hewn from wood, and it looks like it's been carved to have the shape of fangs on it. Uh, there's a couple other masks sitting around. They look different in various ways. Uh. I apologize. Um, I didn't know I was interrupting your party. If you can just direct us to the exit, we will leave you unimpeded. Yeah, they stand up, and with a variety of weapons that they had, you know, at their waist, or just leaning against the wall, they take hold of those. I see you have chosen to invite us to the party. Understood, so and well met. chosen death. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess at this point, let's roll initiative. Hell yeah. Cage is no place for frustration. 19. Bullshit. Uh, 13. I got a 17. Alright. Okay. I'm tactically waiting to see how things play out before making my move. So, Isaac, you got 18 or 19? 19. Uh, 19. 19. 19. 18 on the die, put the plus one to initiative. Tyler got 17? 13. Josh got 17. 13. Josh got 17. Gotcha. Okay. Isaac, you have initiative. Right. There's four guards. Uh, they're armed with a combination of short swords and spears. Two of them have short swords out, two of them have spears. Alright, I'm gonna get up to one of the spear boys and, uh, Take a, take a pokey pokey with the trident. Oh, we're Give both pokey. We're both trident boys. Oof. Uh, that is a uh, crit fail. Oof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, nimbly he dodges aside from the blow of your trident, and you skewer the hell out of a wooden chair. That was my warning shot. Don't make me try again. <laughs> uh, Josh. Alright, I'm gonna bonus action rage. Hell yeah, welcome to Barbarian, my man. <laughs> um, let's see here. And how close is the closest person to me? Uh, given you guys stepped right into the room, uh, ten feet away. Okay. Uh, Ooh. let me look. I gotta see. I gotta move at least 20 feet. Alright, I'm just gonna walk up to him and hit him with my battle axe. Okay, go for it. Uh, 16. That's a hit. Okay, um... One second. Uh, we only get one ba ba bonus action per round, so that won't work this time, but next time that'll be good to know. Oh, I gotta add rage damage to this. Oh my goodness, the heckin' notifications. Alright, uh, <laughs> 17 damage. 17, okay. You cut him at the waist, and he cries out and falls over, and he's gone. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's my turn. Okay, it is their turn. Uh, let's see. I think two of them are gonna go for the Minotaur here, and one of them is gonna go for the human. Great punk. <clears throat> uh, so that's one hit on the Minotaur, and the others flail with a short sword and a spear, but their blows find no purchase. Deftly using my shield, I'll tink tink. Two damage to Josh as uh, 
a short sword kind of glances off your shoulder. Is that what they rolled? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't roll very good. Goodness. Okay, Tyler, you're up. There's three dudes. All right. Well, he Minotaur just cut one guy in half, and the and Clonos has a spear boy um, occupied. I would like to stride up to one of the unoccupied people and attack him with my Go trident. For. And that right there is a 20 non-natural. A flash of 20, if you would. Uh, yeah, that hits. All right. Uh, that's seven piercing damage. Strike my trident and just shoink! He looks very badly hurt, but he is still standing. Eight hit points, got it. <laughs> Kidding. Isaac! One of the right. guys you're oh. occupied with is badly injured, and his buddy is still doing fine, though. Okay. And there's I'm some gonna... short ass music. I'll pull out my trident out of that chair and uh, pokey poke again. Go for it. That is a 15. That'll hit. And let me get a good D6. I like that one. That will be 5, five damage. Five damage. Okay, he is injured, but still up. Give my turn. Okay. Josh. Oh, heck. Uh, I guess I will turn to the next person and make a battle axe attack. Fuck him up. I got a 25. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, eight damage. Oh, let me see. Uh, I'm going to use my hammering horns as well. Um, which means I'll attempt to shove my target with my horns. Um, Incidentally, was it the one that was already injured or the uninjured, uninjured one? Uh, the uninjured one, I guess. That's eight. Uh, and they need to make a strength saving throw of eight plus my proficiency bonus. No. Ten. They have to make it uh, 15. Uh, he fails. Okay, well, he is pushed away from me by how much, you might ask? Um, push 10 feet away. Okay. Um, he will be knocked into a table 10 feet away. Uh, and he is struggling to maintain his balance because he is badly injured. Uh, it is their turn. Uh, okay. More attacks. Uh, the one who was knocked into the table, he's gonna rush back at the Minotaur. Uh, okay. Uh, what's your AC? Uh, Seven, Josh? 17. Yes, 17. That is a miss. His short sword looks like it's gonna close on you, but you just take a step back and it <laughs> falls short. Um, one on Isaac, not even close. One on Tyler, no. Okay, <laughs> Tyler, you're up. Alrighty, the guy that I skewered earlier. Let's just go ahead and finish the job and turn him into a kebab. I don't think a nat one is gonna hit, so you know, Gallus is rusty. Yeah, he swings his weapon. It deflects your blow into the floor. Isaac. All right. Same thing. Do that level one. Do that level one all fighters. <laughs> Just all melee characters. 17. That will surely hit. Fuck him up. Another five damage. Yeah, he drops. After you put another hole in him, he's done. He's on the floor bleeding out. Josh. Yeah. That human is bleeding like a stuck pig, but he's still alive. What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna I'm gonna whack him again, obviously. Whack. whack. Him. Oh, I got a nine. Oh my god. Don't whack him like that. That's no good. God. Wow, we suck. I love this. Okay, we got a boy going for the minotaur and a boy going for the boy. 
We just stand there and skip our turns and see how long it takes them to hit us. Come on, give it your best shot. This is like when you're. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a free one. Keep I've fought with... mud nope. crabs more fearsome than you. <laughs> this is Try like again, son. This is like when you're like playing Fire Emblem and like you have two axe users in the forest taking swings at each other, but they only have like 15% chance to hit, so they just keep on missing each other no matter what. It do be like that. They're getting pretty close, but no, no. Uh, Tyler, your turn. All right, you know what it is, bitch. Uh, don't have any reason. It's a fucking. It's a twelve. That will unfortunately be a miss. <laughs> we joke about this, but this is how a party of mine almost died to a group of alligators. So uh, <laughs> we gotta figure this out quick. Well, um, here's the thing. You know what my actions are? Uh, attack. B. But be beefy. I figured you'd stop an attack, so that's more than I thought you had. <laughs> I have attack and heal self. Clonos, right. fuck him up, please. I poke him. Poke him. <laughs> I want to see Seven. how. I want to know <laughs> how long we can fucking keep this shit going. This is awesome. Mugar, please. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I got 19 this time. Oh, God, okay. thank you. Yeah, it's going to deal tw 12 damage. I imagine Mungo just, like, two hands his axe, like, straight up and just bring it straight down on the guy. Yeah, you split his head. Uh, the remaining human will drop his spear and throw his hands up in the air. Try it at his neck. <laughs> You're not even giving him a chance. You're no, just no, 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 no. We're not like... stabbing him in his neck. Oh, We're putting okay. the trident to his neck. Gotcha. Okay, he surrenders to you. Now that we had to break up your party, do you want to point us to the exit? Uh, he will actually point to a door uh, on the opposite side of the room. That that leads out of here. It's, we've been using it as a, a service entrance, you could say. Yes, uh, bringing goods in through wagons. Um, you you. You're free to go. City entrance for what? What is this place? He hesitates for a second, but then he looks down at the floor with his uh, very dead comrades. Good thinking. He will hastily chime in. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, I suppose you could say, a cult. Uh, Farika. They, they, they worship Farika. Uh, they've been... Uh, taking people uh, you're, you're the first people they've been taking I should say um, they were just sacrificing you know pigs, sheep, that sort of thing um, but now people, uh, he shrugs I, 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 I just I'm, I'm hired help Mungark I've is just gonna protect him yeah, I think Mungark's just gonna spit a giant log on the floor and be like oh, snake people Mungard hates snake people. Hmm. Worshipping the god of affliction. How oh, very, very lovely. And how There's... deep in are you, boy? I deep in I've I've just been keeping watch over this place, helping bring goods in. I I haven't killed anyone. Hmm. Uh, can I throw an insight on this lad? Go for it. Yeet. An 18. This guy's just a dumb thug. They probably hired him off the streets to just be muscled, and it doesn't sound like he's lying. You know, maybe he's had a violent past, but when he says he hasn't killed anyone for these guys, he, he hasn't killed anyone yet. Might have killed you guys, given the chance, but he hasn't killed yeah. anyone, apparently. Now, there's no honor in slaying you. Go and find some different, more honest work. And lower the, uh, lower the trident. Thank you, thank you. And he will turn, and he's gonna go out the door that he indicated, unless anyone's gonna stop it. No. no? Okay. Uh, he's going to blast through a shoddy wooden door, and there's sunlight on the other side of it. Just like that, we're the most morally good party we've ever had in this group's history. 
Mungark is lawful evil, okay? <laughs> Good shit. There was there was no reason to kill that man. If he had attempted to attack us again, he would have been forced to send him to the, uh, his lord, but... <laughs> I like... I, I know, Isaac, you don't like... Uh alignments very much but like please tell me you went lawful good on that boy i mean basically uh, we're all one axis I'm, too this is perfect i i i'm basic i'm playing like i guess i would be naive good like it's gotcha. lawful within his with his within his own like yeah like he That's just fair. doesn't really understand yeah so stupid i mean stupid good it probably would do, like hinge on lawful good I thought you said Kim Jong for a second. I was like, motherfucking what? <laughs> All right. I'm actually, yeah, Kim, Kim Jong is my uh, my line. <laughs> KJ uh -oh. good. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. we see sunlight. So, let's let's hit it. Not gonna explore for. There was there were other passages, but you are more than welcome to just leave if you want to. I mean, like, look. I know it's the I know it's the gamey thing to like explore the dungeon and everything, but. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm torn on it because my character would like he's literally like this isn't what he was sent to do. Yeah, I think Mungark is like, I mean, there's nothing here for him. And, like, uh, Isaac knows. Isaac knows. Like we should explore and like figure shit out. Well, but Klonos is Klonos has got a mission. I think. Um, let me think here. Well, these four were just low arm guards. If we really want to pay back their hospitality, we should find whoever owns this place. My honor demands satisfaction. You're welcome to come with if you would like. To be perfectly clear, you guys are more than welcome to just get the fuck out. Sorry, I'm just I'm just offering like a, a another perspective though, like because. To be fair, we did just, like, fight some thugs. We didn't kill the people who kidnapped us. Or the people who were responsible for it. And none of the guys lying on the floor look like Mastermind, by any stretch. No, of course not. You may have a point. I don't necessarily blend very well. Uh, it might be best to cover our track. That's what I'm thinking. And besides, maybe there's some I don't blend well... Yeah, I don't blend well, and I'm still not the least inconspicuous in the group. <laughs> yeah. Mogus will... Or, not Mogus. Mundark will... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you can imagine. Uh, Mun Mundark will look at the group and be like, Well, Mungark has no uh, horse in this battle, but uh, more sacrifices of war to, the, to my god is always welcome. Luke seems we're in agreement, then. Um. So, uh, there is. If you're stepping back through the door you came in through. Well, do those uh, um, do those gentlemen have like any keys or way of like you know identification on them or anything? The guys that we left very bloody and dead on the floor. They have bloody and torn leather armor. Fantastic. They have the tunics underneath. If you're going to strip them to their bare asses. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just checking. <laughs> just checking. They have ID short cards. cords and spears, and they have nothing else. Corporate okay. ID cards. One of them had a bad hair day when he took his his his, his picture. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's scoot back in then. So, uh, from where you're standing, uh, that you haven't explored yet. There's the passage to the right that you hadn't initially noticed, but your uh, Triton companion had noticed. Um, if you wanted to backtrack, there was the dark, the super dark passage, and there's tunnel leading north, or to your left. Uh, I think we should try the dark passage. I have a torch, so me and Mungar can see. Can see. Okay. Uh, so you do a little bit of backtracking uh, back toward where the alcoves are. Uh, this tunnel is narrow. It's like you could go uh, two men wide. That is the Triton and the human. You probably couldn't squeeze beside the uh, Minotaur. Well, well, Mungar wanted to 
um, Mungark wanted to lead the way anyway, so I okay, say we well. let him. Well, Mungark, when you step uh, into this passage, it widens a bit into uh, almost a square-shaped room. And the first thing you notice about it is that the floor is moving. Oh? Yeah, and with the torchlight, it's easy enough to see that the floor is just, just jamming with snakes. Snakes. Why did Mungark have to deal with snakes? <laughs> I, 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 I knew it, but like, yeah. uh, um, so like, are they like, are they are they being douchebags about it, or like, are they just kind of slizzling around? They're just jamming around. They're just snakes. Yeah. Uh, in here, well, okay, Mungark is the one that leads. He's really the only one who can see much beyond you know the floors moving. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what he can see is that there's uh cracks in the walls of this uh this cave room uh through which you can see some glimmers of daylight so it looks like the snakes kind of c crawl in and out of here as they please it's really just a space where the snakes have been chilling out um in the northwest corner of the room uh it looks like there's a passage that goes back it would loop around back to uh the tunnel uh, that led north. And that's kind of all you can see from here. There's, there's snakes and more tunnel that loops around. Mungard's going to take a step backwards and be like, on second thought, maybe we don't go through the tunnel full of dangerous animals that we cannot control. Uh, would, you know, I'll let everyone do a, a nature check if they'd like. Question, actually. Go for it. Uh, let me read this real quick. Oh, never mind. They can't. These snakes. I'm assuming these snakes cannot breathe water. Ah. Uh, inter okay. Interesting way of phasing that question. You could perhaps find out with a nature roll. Can <laughs> you I? Pull I it up and you it. jam it into a puddle. Hmm. Can it breathe? Can well, I, it's not moving anymore. Well, I don't well, think so. <laughs> well, okay. No, Colonos is just naive enough to try this. Um. Because he hasn't really come into contact with animals before of the surface, but I have a I have a, a racial feature that allows me to communicate simple ideas with beasts that can breathe water. Are they water moccasins? Um, if they are, then we need to leave. <laughs> well, uh, he, would, he would be he would, he would be just naive enough to try this because he I mean he doesn't realize that it's just sea creatures to him. It's just he can talk to animals. That's uh, cute. So you... You attempt to, like, make eye contact with one of them and kind of snap your fingers and get its attention. Uh, you're, not, you're not getting any special cues from it or anything. It it does not seem to understand you. It hisses your a little bit at you, and it kind of shrinks back. Your surface creatures are, are very rude. Yeah, they're also not that big of a problem. Um, it has a cute little tongue. Can I Can I persuade you for a survival check? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Then a 16. Okay. These, these are not even venomous snakes. They are of a variety that just, uh, they just kind of lounge around and they pounce when there's a, a mouse or something Bitch, near them. Me, me too. They're, they're not... If you were to go waiting in there, they'd probably bite you just out of self-defense, but they're not inherently dangerous creatures. These things are harmless besides bite. You're not scared, are you? Looks up at Mungark. Uh, Mungark is very angry that you would insinuate that he was scared of anything, and <laughs> he goes, Watch your tongue, little one, or Mungark will watch it for you. Well, then lead the way. Whoa. All right, Mungark's gonna walk into the room. Okay. Uh, you are holding the torch, yes? Uh, no. Gallus uh, is, but he can pass it off like it's not a big deal. There were two torches. We honestly could have took one apiece. Yeah, I don't care. You, you, unless you don't want to have a torch, you have a fucking torch, okay? I mean, Mungark uses a two-handed weapon, so probably doesn't 
necessarily want to be holding a torch. Okay, yeah, he's he's got labyrinth sense anyway. He's a he's a minotaur. Uh, okay, Mungark, even or odd? Odd. Okay, some snakes hiss at you, but they they aren't nipping at you. So they're definitely not the most vicious, but they're they're trying to keep their distance. But you're pressing a little close to them. Okay. Uh, so I assume you're just trying to skirt around them to the the sort of tunnel that leads out of here. Yeah, just try to get through the room. Okay. Um. Gallus, roll me a d20. I would love to. Oh, 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 oh. okay, thank god. Uh, it's an 18. Okay, yeah. Uh, the snakes hiss at you guys, but it's speci especially from the torchlight, they seem to shy away from the party. I flex um, at them. Pretty much. Uh, and stepping into the tunnel that seems to loop back around, uh, there's a skeleton on the floor here. Hmm. And it seems to have a pack with it. Well, we might as well check the pack and see who... If we can get some clues about who they are. Uh, so it is a Dungeoneer's kit. Um, and there's nothing of note in it. Other than, you know, it being a Dungeoneer's kit. Hmm. Well, seeing as I already have one of those... Like, wow, the we skeleton, have the skeleton is aged enough that it would seem unlikely it has anything immediate to do with this, whatever this cult may be, unless they've been here for, like, a long time. Mm -hmm. So, circumstantial at best. Well, then I guess we keep going. Okay, so, you step into the tunnel and come out the other side, and you're basically in the same hallway as uh, as the entrance to the barracks and that. So all you have now is are you going to go north or are you going to go south to the passage that uh, the Triton had noticed? Uh, I think the my vote's for the one that uh, that Klonos noticed. Seems like it's the most uh, divergent from where we've gone. Sure. Okay. Um, Mungark still leading the way. Yeah, cool. Uh, <laughs> so this passage, you you probably wouldn't have noticed it right away if it wasn't for Klonos. But I mean, you guys have been backtracking and stuff, so you you, you would have noticed eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely not hidden by design. It's just this is clearly a natural uh, passageway in the cave. Uh, there are torch brackets. Uh along the way every 10 feet or so but torches have burnt out they haven't been relit for I'll just hand it to you that they probably haven't been lit for a few hours um it's better than days yeah yeah no I, I hate when that happens when you when you stop being lit uh <laughs> <laughs> god oh what are we gonna do with you wind through this uh this passageway for about 40 feet or so and it opens into uh, another wider more open cavern uh, the first thing you notice about it is that it has uh, kind of a crude wooden pen built up uh, off to one side um, the eastern wall where, uh, where it's kind of built up to there's a rock fall uh, blocking what would seem to be the passage, so it would seem this room is like directly uh, opposite, and might once have been connected to the the cave room where you guys had woken up. Um, and in this kind of crudely constructed pen, uh, you guys have torches and stuff, so it doesn't matter. So I will tell you that there is, first of all, a chest, uh, and secondly, there's a number of large-ish scorpions kind of scuttling around in here. Well, this place sucks. Um... Well... Wait, so, like, you know, scorpions, yes. Um... What's, like... 
they've got the pin and there's a collapsed in tunnel. And there's uh, no, yes. And there's no other exits or entries or anything? Nope. Only thing of interest in here would appear to be the chest and the scorps. Are there like, is it like the snakes where they're just like covering the floor? Or is it like, is that uh, there are fewer of them. There's like six. Oh, but they're like good size scorpions. They're not like normal scorpion size. Uh, they're decent size. I'd say no bigger than like a small dog. Okay. They don't look super specially dangerous, but you could make a nature check if you wanted. Yeah, I think I might. Sure, my nature sucks, but I keep rolling really well. I got a 16. I got a 12. Also, I appreciate that Isaac is not making these rolls because his character does not yeah, know that's shit. Good shit. Does not know yeah, shit. No, that, no that's, well, that's straight up why I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Nature, uh, checks are, nature checks are going to be basically, are these like my things? <laughs> <laughs> so the 16, uh, these scorpions, much like the snakes from earlier, are not venomous. Which, you know, kind of cuts down on their uh, danger. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're pinchy boys. They they are aggressive, even if they're not venomous. Okay. Come These here, are odd-looking crabs. How... They do look a lot like crabs. How far away is the next one? Or the um, first one, Jimmy? The closest one is probably, like, a foot away from the kind of swinging gate that would open into this little corral. It, it's kind of looking up at you guys with this eight black soulless little eyes. Hey man, he might have hobbies. You don't know anything about him. Uh, <laughs> He's got these, soul. These crabs, I've, I've never seen them with such deformities. They have tails. It's odd. They're called scorpions and they're not very nice. Mungark's gonna look at uh, <laughs> Clonus and be like, Mungark thinks that you might not be the smartest uh, or the brightest cr uh, flame in the candle, huh? Which leads me to wonder, just because of the circumstances of our last party, what's everyone's intellig intelligence mods <laughs> in this party? Mine's a negative one. Okay, good. Zero here. I have a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent! <laughs> I've got, a, I've got a plus one in wisdom. I feel like Mungark that's... Mungark, no, up. only war. <laughs> I think probably the only outlier is my charisma store, but the rest of us is probably pretty close in all of our stats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, Perfect. So, there's six scorpions, and they're just kind of plodding along. The ones closest to the fence that can, like, see you guys are just staring and waiting. I think Mungard's gonna try to jump down and squish one on the landing. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Can, we 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 can't see what's on the other side of the uh, the fence, right? Um, it's yeah, you can. It's not like a tall fence or anything. It's just a shitty little corral meant to keep these scorpions in. It would seem. Oh, so this is like this is like petting farm like corrals yeah. where they have yeah. like the posts and that you can like reach your hand in in between right. them. It's like a little scorpion petting zoo. Let's fuck some scorpions up. Let's do it. Roll well, initiative. Yeet. These scorpions ain't no pushovers. Well, that is a two on initiative. Hot diggity. We got an 11. And I got a 10. Scorpions are going first. We get like a surprise even, attack. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, even though I jumped on them. <laughs> uh... You're basically I'm... getting a surprise round because I'm stipulating that no one has actually jumped in yet. So, for all the good that I, their I... initiative did. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, Tyler got a 10? Yes. And Josh got a... 11. Like a what? 11. Uh, okay. I love how I can totally pay attention to people's roles whenever I'm not actually DMing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, it's the Scorpion's turn. They tiptoe around uh josh's turn i would like to try to squish one let's roll athletics for that athletics he says oh well no you could make a, an unarmed attack it's same same fucking difference 
Okay, one second. I don't have a thing for unarmed attack, because of course I don't. It's just, uh, it's your, yeah, it's your... Yeah, I, I rolled a 15. That will hit. Roll Ooh. me... Yeah, this is a d4 plus strength mod, it's fine. Because, I mean, you have a horns attack, but this is hooves, and it's, it's fucking close enough. I a got a 6. Okay. Let me check. Uh, yeah. No, he goes squish. Poor boy. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I think I probably just go. Aha! Mungark find this very entertaining. Mungark utilize laws of gravity. Mungark not find dis- their weakness. Not discovered yet. <laughs> Tyler, you're up, buddy. Oh, There's boy. five scorpions and one flat scorpion. Um, well, we're gonna do our classic move that we call walking up and poking him with a, uh, triton. That's an 18 to hit. That'll hit. Boom. Uh, seven damage. You skewer him on the end of your trident, and his legs kind of curl in like those of a spider would, and his tail shakes around a bit, and he goes still. Oh, yeah. Lift him up and then just flick him off. Well, that's rude. Uh, Isaac... There's four Scorpy boys. So, remind me, that, like, this is just a separate pin. Like, there was no reason for us to get into it. Just, they just, just cause. This is just their vendetta. It's, uh, I think, like, there was more shit we could look at in the room, and we're just like, well, we can't do this without fucking, we can't do this with scorpions in here. Okay. There's a chest got... in the middle of the pen that the scorpions gotcha. kind of. Gotcha. Okay, I was like, what's yeah. our motive for doing it? Because if it's literally just, like, it's just because like, fuck Scorpion. XP. If there's a treasure in those yeah, in their yeah, hills. If if Cowman jumps in pin and that's the only motivation, Fishboy would be like, nah. But <laughs> there's shit. There's treasure, maybe. Okay. Then I jump in and I poke. Poke. Do it. 19. Boink. That definitely hits. For three damage. He goes squish. Now it's their turn, fuckos. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. Tyler, what's your AC? Nineteen. <laughs> One of the scorpions viciously clacks its claws and scuttles towards you, and you step out of the way. I use my uh, shield, bruh. It's a scorpion, Tyler. You don't need to use your shield. You just step out of the way. Whatever. I'm gonna use my shield. I have like the whole thing going of like a Spartan warrior with a spear and a shield. That's the whole aesthetic I'm cultivating here. You're fighting scorpions, you fuck. You can step on them. You don't need to bring your shield down to protect yourself. Oh boy. The other two uh, lash out with their claws at the other boys, but they don't. They don't do shit. Uh, Mungark is having a lot of fun. <laughs> Go for it, Mungark. He's like, ha ha, puny scorpion. <laughs> Guess he's gonna roll another. We're just gonna, we're yeah, gonna, just like gonna keep stepping great. on him. He just like lays down and starts rolling around. <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely hit. So I rolled it without my modifier and got a seventeen. So okay, spoiler: you don't need to roll damage if he's dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Tyler. Oh yeah. Well, you know what's up. We're gonna hold do... on. Non-lethal damage, so we can interrogate. <laughs> Non-lethal stomping. <laughs> what do you work for? Uh, it's a 16. <laughs> that hit, and it squishes. Where's Rachel? Would you believe it? So you said you said it squishes, so I'm going to roll with that, but if we, you wouldn't have said that, I rolled a 1 on damage. It would have been 4 damage. That's okay. It's still dead. Yay. Oh, swear to God, swear to me. <laughs> Isaac, please, please, please kill the last boy. Good. One. R- really? Yeah. That's hilarious. How did okay, you get one? Twenty-one. Oh, twenty. Oh, oh! I thought you, you said cut one. out and <laughs> I was like, one? what? <laughs> yeah, no, twenty-one. Okay, that's different. That will hit. Yeah, you killed. It. It's like, how do you roll a one? You should have modifiers at least. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i a paladin that puts strength as his dumpster, dumpster stat. Piece of shit. Alright, <laughs> okay, you killed the last scorpion. They're all dead. 
do a little victory pose, and then yeah. Um, all right, let's uh, let's take a let's take a look at this chest here. It's a nice chest. Well, excellent. Uh, will you attempt to open it? I mean, well, now now that you said it like that, Mongark will attempt to open. It. <laughs> yeah, we we will. Mongark summons his strength. And it pops open very easily. Gotcha. And it contains... Ooh! Uh, it contains... Five empty vials and four, count them four, potions of healing. Holy shit. Hey. That's one apiece. Well... <laughs> so then I'll take two. Yeah, I was gonna say, you, you, can, you can take two. I'm gonna just take one I have built in. My my character's kind of built to like keep people alive. I took the healer feet, so like I'm built to keep people alive. Gotcha. All right. Well, it's a good thing we did that, um, just for later. But so, and there's no other way out of here or anything. Uh, the pin. Nope. Hmm. Well, interesting because. I'm trying to think, do we, did we miss anything, or have we checked nope, out the entire place? No, you haven't. There's still passage going north, like past the barracks, past the place with the snakes. That's the one I was thinking of. Well, then I think we should go to the north one. Do it. Oh, it's um, like, Mungard does not remember way. We'll follow, though. All right, well, Gallus will head it up, then. Okay. Uh, heading out of this room, you just go straight. <laughs> you just go straight for a uh, hundred feet. Just uh, occasional little bend here or there in the cave's passageway. Um, but you see an opening up ahead on the left. And as you get closer, you hear... It sounds like kind of dissonant chanting. I think we found our cult. Uh, what's the what's the order here? What's the who's in front this time? I believe Gallus will be in front. Okay, Mungark will be close behind. Okay, so Gallus Mungark. Okay, uh, are we sneaking at all? Are we even trying to, or just walking? No. Oh, fuck no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Clang 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 clang. With the trolley? Okay. Uh, we're we're, we're going to regret that eventually, but today is not that day. No. Uh, okay. You step into a large natural cave chamber, much larger than the other ones. Um, I'd say it's about 70 feet, and it's fairly evenly circular. Um, there's a number of people gathered here. They were chanting. Uh, none of you have performance as a skill, do you? Oh no. Nope. Nope. Well, it. Imagine I was like Mungark, <laughs> Mungark minor in thespianism. <laughs> <laughs> well, suffice it to say, it didn't I mean, sound. I have. I have. I have. Uh like tool proficiency with like a drum so like I would understand it like basic musicianship I yeah guess. okay uh, so I'll give it to you that well to them it just sounds like uh, they're not good singing but to you it's clear that this isn't very well practiced just whatever the hell they're trying to chant um they ain't got no rhythm no they don't uh so there is twelve humanoids in what is the term white ketons or togas to the simps um uh, kind of gathered around an altar in the middle of the room she just call me a simp <laughs> and um at, towards the back of the room there's kind of a raised dais uh at the top of which is standing Another figure in a white toga, but this one is specialer. 
he is a balding pale man who has a white cloak over his toga and somewhat alarmingly perhaps he's wearing a necklace adorned with bloody teeth of varying shapes and sizes well that is disturbing we're gonna they pr prattle up from our van well what are you gonna say sorry yeah they notice you guys come in instantly because you are not trying to be stealthy uh well, go on mind mind your business uh i just want to talk to that guy up there the rest of you continue practicing for your pitiful recital who is yeah this? no Mungark is gonna bellow at them yeah they turn around um who is responsible for the lot of you similar to the guards from earlier these guys have just a mishmash of masks that literally look homemade some of them are ceramic some of them are wood all vaguely carved with images of like toothy snakes uh most of them d don't look even slightly professional they look like crap um, baby's, baby's first cult really that's the impression you get um the the guy on top of the dais he's not even bothering to wear a mask um he will put his hands on his hips and bellow a hearty laugh Ah, the sacrifices come of their own accord, do they? Are you well, the master? Of, are you the master of this ring? Yes, I am, and he's going to throw his hands up in the air, and then you will the, die uh, first. The cultists are kind of gonna shuffle off to either side of the room. Uh, it's at this point that you notice, on either side, like there's, you guys came in from the east. The dais is off to the west side of the room, and on the north and south walls, there are large glass tanks that are filled with dark brackish water, uh, almost like fish tanks, if you will. Hmm. And there are surging, uh, slithery shapes in them, and... The cultists go closer to the tanks. And the the leader of this cult will look down at you all and will say, Prostrate yourselves before Farika, and she will grant you a painless death. Gallus looks to Mungark and he says, I'll take the right, you take the left. Uh, Mungark is going to again bellow uh well and then charge i guess the priest holds up his hands and he bellows a prayer to frika and nothing happens what it appears it appears that your prayers fell silent now give up now he will stammer for a second he'll say do it release them and roll initiative. Yeet. Ye and or ha. 11. I got a 21. Woof, 16. They didn't roll that well. Bitches. Uh, what did you get, Isaac? 11. 11. And real quick. Uh, okay, that's... Allow me. And... Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Okay. Josh, you have initiative here. There mm. are six... Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are six cultists on either side of the room. And then there's the leader boy up at the dais. And he, he looks like he was trying to cast a spell, but nothing happened. He forgot How his... far away is he from us? Uh, this is a big-ass room. Uh, you guys are maybe 10 feet in, and he is still, like, 60 feet away from you. Okay, so Google, I'm, gonna, have... I'm going to dash. Okay, so you can close the distance between you and him. Uh... Yeah, so uh, I'm going to run straight up to him, and I'm going to use my Goring Rush as a bonus action 
<laughs> so I get to make a, a an attack with my horns. Do it up. A 24. That will definitely hit. So this is a, I believe, um, I believe my horns are just a, oh, it's a D6 plus my strength modifier. Okay. Uh, 11 damage. Okay. He is quite bloody. Nah. Okay. And that's going to be it, it for my turn. Okay. Tyler's turn. Um, so you said there's one tank on each side of the room? Yeah. Let's count it out. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, thirty. They're about 40 feet away from you. Okay. Um,. Well, we're going to move 30 feet up, and we're going to, at the end of my movement speed, we're going to chuck a hand axe at one of the cultists by the fish tank on the right, which I believe is uh, to the north. Yes. Uh, go for it. Give me an attack roll. Uh, it's a 19 to hit. That hits. All right. 1d6 plus a 3. Uh, it's 5. Slashing damage. Okay, he drops. He's fucking dead. All right. That'll do it. Uh, bu- 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 Bad boy's turn. Uh, since his prayers have apparently gone unanswered, he's just gonna slash at the Minotaur with a long, thin, silvery knife. Okay. Uh, he's actually gonna fucking hit. Damn. Oh. For five damage. As he draws some blood from your forearm. Okay. Now he he himself didn't seem to cut deep, but the knife he's wielding is very sharp. Okay. Um. Okay. That happened. Cultists. Right. Uh. On both sides of the room, they're going to get to work at some kind of hand cranks. And glass panes on the front of each of the tanks are going to be raised and water hastily drains out and the lumpy shapes within are going to slam against the glass as it's being raised uh the one on the north the glass kind of instantly gives way and the things just fall out of the tanks willy-nilly uh the one on the south will take a bit longer but you can see now, from the north tank, there's a giant snake-like creature. It's gray and blobby. And it is immediately going to... Alright. Alright. Yeah, it rises up. And it has... It doesn't really have a face. It doesn't have any visible eyes. But it does have a mouth. Hmm. It's small and ringed with sharp-looking teeth. And it will jam that mouth down and wrap it around the head of one of the cultists. And it's going to just suck the head right off the cultist. And with a gross, wet crunch noise, that cultist is very dead. Do uh, for your me. friends are now my friends. Okay. Josh's turn. Uh, we're gonna whack this cult leader. Whack him. You should get me, by the way. Oh, wait, go back to... Yeah, go back to Isaac. Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, Isaac. Alright, so you went after the cult leader. Tyler went north for... The, cause there, and there's cultists on north and south, right? Yeah. Yeah, there was like so I'm gonna, six so of I'm these. Gonna go south, but, yeah, so I'm gonna go the other way. And poke. 19. That will poke a cultist. 5. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite soda. Poke a cultist. <laughs> <laughs> and there's favorite, our title. My favorite hoedown move. 5 damage, you said? Yes. Okay, that is a dead cultist. Um, and incidentally, again, that... <laughs> That uh, that side is where the thing in the tank has not yet emerged, but the one on the north side has. Bring it, bitch. Um, 
Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Sends back up to Josh. All right, now I'll whack him. Whack him good. 23. That's a definitely hit. Uh, 13 damage. He's on his last legs, clearly. He is, oh my goodness. by no means is this guy like a trained fighter. So when he's taken to a, a blow from your horns and a blow from your axe, he looks like he's going to crumple very soon. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Tyler's turn. Um, so these cultists are clearly not a huge threat, so Gallus is going to turn his attention to the creature that popped out of the tank and is going to stab at it with his trident. It's gray and wrinkly and large and fat and... So am I in the morning, but that's not important. Um, 24. That is a hit. All right. 1d6. Yeet. All right. That's a 9. Max damage. 9 damage as you slash into its body and it oozes fresh blood. Normal red blood? Yeah, normal red blood. Sick. Very, very human-looking blood, in fact. Uh, bad boy's turn. He's gonna lunge at the Minotaur again with his knife. Uh, he'll hit again. Damn. Four Ooh, damage. We didn't take this lucky knife. It's very sharp. Uh, Mungard's not looking so good. Well, it's a good thing we have no healers. Okay, hey, now I'm not going to skip over Isaac's turn this time. Uh, Isaac, your turn. I want to poke another guy. <laughs> poke a man. I'm having fun. 18. 18 damage. That's another dead cultist. It's 4 damage, but it's 18 to hit. That's fine. He's dead. <laughs> That's what I got. Yeah, we're, okay. not, we're not bonus action boys quite yet. Not yet. Okay. So Excuse you, I've taken thing. multiple bonus actions. <laughs> That's fair. The thing in the south tank is not out yet. The thing in the north tank, however, is mad. Uh, Tyler, even or odd? Odd. Okay. Uh, it lunges seemingly without any intelligence or will behind it beyond just hunger and it does the thing again where it rears up and brings its teeth down on another of the cultists and yeah same thing that boy's head goes pop keep doing what you're doing bro like and it seems to be lapping up the blood from the stump of its neck. Yeah. The cultist neck, that is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty gross. Yucky. Uh, okay. Cultist turn. Uh, the ones on the south that aren't immediately being killed are going to finish cranking open the tank. And the gray slimy boy falls out. Um, the ones on the north and the south given their diminishing numbers here they're going to try to run and they're going to provoke opportunity attacks so uh, if you'd like to make one Tyler and Isaac I would be delighted to uh, 16 yeah that's a hit 22, 22. and that's a hit Four. that's 6 damage okay that's a dead man Isaac I almost 4 4 yeah Okay, that's another dead man. There are five cultists left, plus the leader. Uh, the ones that did not immediately die are running towards the dais. They don't look like they have any weapons of any sort on them, actually. They look like they're just trying to book it. Uh, Josh's turn. There are people rushing towards you, but they don't have weapons, and they don't actually look interested in you in the slightest. Yeah, I'm just going to finish off this cultist leader. Fuck him up. Uh, 26 for 6 damage. That's a hit, and he crumples to the ground as you bury your axe in his shoulder. It cleaves through his shoulder, and you definitely got him in the heart, because there's just a spout of blood out of his chest, 
and out of his mouth, and he crumples. Sick. Um, I guess I will... Man, I kind of need to heal. Uh... <laughs> well, it's a good thing we picked up those lovely little chugga-chugs. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Can I do that since I attacked? Instead of moving? Bonus, bonus uh, action for, yeah. for yourself. Oh, it is yeah. a bonus action. Okay, then I'll ch I will chug my potion as my bonus action. Okay, you'll be healed for 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. Alright, I'm going to get back 6 health points. And then I'm going to move my distance uh, towards... Uh, I guess towards Isaac. Okay. Uh, none of the cultists even try to interrupt you. Uh, there's a shout of, Antikios is dead! The blood serpents are loose! Run! Run for your lives! Blood serpents? Oh boy. What a nice, charming name. In it. Uh, Tyler, you're up. Alright, well, this blood serpent's about to have a lot less blood in its serpent. Uh... 18 to hit. That'll hit. Yeet. Uh, six damage. Okay. Poke. There's a shrill, high-pitched scream as it takes another injury. <laughs> Neat. Uh, and then it's Isaac's turn before I end up skipping his fucking turn again. Um... Is the other blood serpent out then yet? It is, and it's looking... Well, I say looking, it doesn't have eyes, but it's Boo. probing in your direction. Okay, I'm gonna poke it. Poke him. That is a nine to hit. <laughs> oh no, it's happening again. Yeah, that... You don't get a good angle on them, and you're trying to kind of glides off of it. It's It's got kind of a slimy consistency to it, and its flesh good. seems kind of rubbery, so just boing. Good. It's an Alaskan uh, bullworm! <laughs> okay, it's their turn. Uh, Blood Serpent number one. Tyler, what's your AC again? 19. Okay, this thing rears up. And it digs its teeth into your shoulder. Bastard. For a whopping three damage. I... As okay. rows of sharp teeth dig into you. I really wanted to use my fucking feature, but three damage isn't worth losing sleep over. No. Uh, and... Yeah, let's go for Isaac. No, that's not gonna hit. Okay. Uh, back up to Josh's turn. Okay, I'm going to move to the opposite side of the monster from Isaac. Oh, uh, and the cultists, they there's an exit, it looks like, uh, past the dais. It looks like they're fleeing that way. Okay. But, you know. So you're going south towards Isaac? Yeah, I'm going to go stand on the other side of the monster. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You will be able to close, so you can attack this turn, too, if you wanted. Cool. There we go. Uh, I got a crit. Yeah, fuck him up, buddy. Uh, 18 damage? Ooh. There is a shriek piercing the air as this thing bleeds. Not just, like, one stuck pig, but it's it's like you throw a fucking pig into a blender. You just blood has... everywhere. It has a lot of blood for just being one fat creature. Cool. Okay. Uh, Tyler, your turn. Okay. Uh, which one did he... Did he kill mine or did he kill Klonos's? Uh, it's not dead. It's just okay. very injured. Got you. Sorry. Uh, yours, yours is still relatively healthy. Well, it, let's... It's bled a lot, but it's still... It's still uh, standing let's say let's make it a little bit less healthy uh that's a nat 20 to hit <laughs> fuck him up all right so let's see so wow shit uh so it's a, uh 12 12 damage total on the crit 
<laughs> do like a fancy little spin and then poke. It shrieks and it continues to bleed everywhere. You're probably all covered in blood at this point. That's fine. Uh, Mungark is very happy about that. <laughs> These things bleed even better than humans do. And it is dark, rich scarlet. Uh, Isaac, your turn. I'm gonna poke it. That is a... 13 to poke. Uh, 13. Again, slimy, rubbery surface. Your trident kind of glides across it. Bunker, it's like, My friend, what's wrong? Are you even trying? Uh, poker isn't just isn't poking. Hey, oh, there we go. Voice. The, my that. poker is not poking. Uh, Isaac, what's your AC? 18. Okay, you will take a hit from a blood serpent. For, okay, what the six, fuck? six damage on you as this thing kind of quickly latches onto your belly with its. It's suckery mouth and takes a chomp out of you. And Tyler takes... Uh, we'll see how that goes. Five damage. This thing takes another chunk out of you. I will then use my thing. I'm going to use my reaction to activate my unscarred uh, supernatural gift. As its uh, fangs retract... Um, seven regenerated so i go back up to 14 so as its fangs retract um it leaves uh, around bleh, it leaves behind like these you know nasty gashes that just seemingly just patch themselves up super fast and yeah then, by the time this thing has reeled back where there should be a chunk of you missing there just isn't all right i'm back up to 14 i can't use that until i do a rest uh Isaac's turn. Poke him again. Poke him. Fifteen to poke. Uh, Getting there. Unfortunately, this one too will glide off. Um, their turn. What? How close is everybody again? Uh, I'm Isaac. Standing, I was gonna say I'm standing on the other side of the monster for me. Isaac and Josh are by the same one, on the south side of the room, and Tyler is alone facing the one on the north side of the room, and yes. they are about fifty feet apart. You're about fifty okay. feet apart from each other. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to position myself to where me at where Plonos and Mundark are like kitty corner to this monster. Sorry, say that again? I'm gonna like kind of just shuffle around the monster to where instead of like we're on opposing sides, like we're kind of kitty corner from it. Are you gonna take the disengage action so you don't get mauled? No, I'm just gonna move around him. Yeah, he's, he's not leaving shuffle. his attack. Okay, I get you. I get you. I get you. Okay, okay cool. So you can get the five um, feet thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, 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 but. Uh, their turn. Yep. Uh, nope. Okay. Um. They really like the taste of Tyler. <laughs> uh, seven damage as this thing bears down on you and takes out another chunk. Fucking just regenerated that, you asshole. <laughs> Josh, you're up. These things have bled a lot. They probably can't stand up to much more. I'm gonna whack it. I got a 26. That hits it. Uh, 15 damage. Okay. You axe that one and carve out a big chunk of it, and it wiggles fiercely. Um, but you can see kind of into it. You, it, you can see what looks like an organ, maybe, and you've taken a chunk out of it. So, in a few more seconds of wiggling, and this thing stops. Okay. Uh, I am not going to move yet, because if I charge next turn, I get to a... Well, if I move up next to it, I guess... I'm trying to think. 
We're 50 feet away. I can't dash to it this turn. Yeah, I guess I'll just move my movement uh, to get closer to it. Okay, you are a bit more than halfway there. Uh, Tyler. Uh, I'm going to bonus action second wind. Okay. Um, so again, Gallus' wounds will seem to mend themselves. I regenerate eight hit points this time, bringing me back up to a healthy 15. How many times do you get to do this? Those are my two. No. Oh, okay. Unscarred, yeah. res Unscarred Resilience and Second Wind are two different things. One's a bonus, oh, ac okay. one's a bonus action, one's a reaction. Um, okay. And then with my action, you know what it is, bitch. 17 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Nine damage. That boy writhes and wriggles. And you stab him again and he stops moving. Fuck yeah. We did the thing. They're dead. The blood serpents are slain. And for the record, I'm going to put a picture of them in general here. One sec. <laughs> and I just put new music on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. They're... Oh, fuck you. <laughs> God damn it. Blood servants. They're giant leeches. <laughs> That's all right, you ass. <laughs> let's uh, uh, let's like uh, check out this cult leader lad. Like, let's look at that knife. Like, what's he doing with that knife? Oh, uh, can I get a religion check from people? I would be delighted. I'm proficient in that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I got a zero. It's a 16 from me. Um, Gark actually forgot his own religion for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> I got an I got an eight. M Mogus? M Mogus? Mongart. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> he suffered some blood loss. Okay, so... Gallus alone, as the others are just kind of staring at these things like, what the fuck were these? Um, you kind of put some things together here. So the the one guard had mentioned this was some sort of cult dedicated to Farika, who is all about that. Uh, she likes Please. snakes and poison and all disease and affliction and healing. Um, so the, the brass urns, the de depicted healers, that kind of syncs up. The non-venomous scorpions and non-venomous snakes don't quite add up. And these uh, quote-unquote blood serpents, the, they're definitely not directly associated with anything in the religion either. Uh, so whatever this was all about, it kind of didn't make sense as a cult of Farika. Well, if this is some sort of cult, then it's definitely a fringe movement. It 100%. It could not be... Uh, there's little room for doubt in your mind that this could be anything more than just a small fringe cult because, I mean, for Christ's sake, the, the blood serpents were leeches. Mm -hmm. They're not any actual snakes. And he couldn't actually produce a spell either, which I'm assuming no. in this setting means that they don't have the, the favor. Yeah, um, given the certainty with which he was saying the words he definitely expected to produce a spell so either he's some sort of fucking madman who mm. thinks he can cast magic or he could but his uh deity has since withdrawn favor well now he's dead so it doesn't really matter exactly. and now he's dead so uh inspecting his body and the numerous uh stab wounds and slash wounds that has been accumulated from mungark uh he has his necklace of teeth he has his robe, he has his uh, cloak, and his dagger. Um, uh, I could probably find a picture of this, too. One second here. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's blurry as hell. One second, I could get a better one than that. That'll do. Doesn't quite work, but you know.
Hmm. It looks like it was made from like a single piece of metal. Oh, interesting. And it looks like that. And we lost a man. Oh. oh cool. back. Mungard's going to take yep. it. Um. Yeah, Mungard's going to take it and uh, use it or like as a like a symbolic gesture of the, the battle he was in. Okay. You have a scalpel. Uh, if all that's it, done it functions and... as a dagger. Nice. If all that is done and dealt with, I'd say that we got what we wanted. Should go report this to the authorities, then be on our way. Yeah, the cultists, as they were, did did leave uh, through a passageway that's behind the dais here. Cool. Well, let's lead through there. Um, I don't really know about Melitus or like you know their stance on religions, but like. Are certain deities like outlawed versus others, or is it generally cool to worship everyone? I mean, they're like the... all cool. The only lines that are really drawn is with obviously shit like this, like human sacrifice. That's kind of never been a thing. Got it. I mean, they 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 kidnapped you. Yeah, that, that that's kind of, that's exactly where I'm standing. I'm like, well, yeah, go fuck yourself. You kidnapped me. I don't care what you worship, but like. Yeah, if someone was like, I'm going to throw myself off a fucking cliff in the ocean for Thassa, people would be like, yeah, all right, that's cool, that's beautiful, but like, I'm going to kidnap these guys and cut their throats at an altar? No. Not legal. Uh, okay, well... Mind you, tribes of minotaurs devoted to Mogus would probably do that sort of thing, but they do that way far from here, and that also, you know, not yeah, very not, legal. Not in the polis, yeah. All right, well... I, uh, <clears throat> let's say we take the leader's head and go turn it in. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna walk up and grab him by the hair, and, or like the top of his head, and just chop his head off and bring it with him. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the necklace of teeth will just kind of clatter to the <laughs> floor. Oh, yeah, I guess that was kind of a token, wasn't Oh, well, oh, well. Why uh, so, prove it with a necklace when I can just bring him the real thing? Goddamn right. Plus, he has teeth in his head. <laughs> can make yeah, a new exactly. necklace. So the passageway behind the dais, uh, it winds up and quickly becomes a set <laughs> of stairs that have been carved into this passageway. And you find yourself in... It kind of looks like a cellar. Mm, convenient. And some stairs lead up. Then we go up. You go up, and you find yourselves in a room with a table. A very nicely polished table um, with like a, you'd guess a marble top on it. Um... And there are instruments around on other tables. There's, like, scalpels and drills and things. Um, for all intents and purposes, this looks like, um, like the back room where a physician would ply their trade. Mm. And there is a door, and it is ajar. And you hear... Is it a door or a jar? Was, yeah. Uh... <laughs> And you hear commotion coming from the other room there. Well, we might as well be like, sup, bitches. So you step on through, and there is... It's a scene. Uh, there are the five cultists who are kind of just... Standing there trying to explain something to a woman in a vaguely similar white... Uh, Toga. Well, I'll just fucking call her Toga because it's a Toga. Um, and there's a number of just random ass citizens in here. There's like an older guy with a blue Toga who's just sitting in a chair and looks like he's waiting. Uh, there's a small child that's kind of on the verge of tears with uh, his mother. Um, but it sounds like the cultists are trying to explain themselves away. We meeting with Antiqu yes yes no we were 
that there were there were people down there, and and then they turn and see you. We are covered in blood. And we have the severed. Blood. We have the severed head of the dude. Like, Hello, friends. You're being uh, deceived. The child starts crying. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Better, better he, better he learned this lesson now. Um, definitely gonna be like, join a cult. <laughs> you are all being deceived. And I, deceived. I go up to. I'm actually gonna go up to the small child. And like uh, get down on one knee and try to do the whole like uh, like trying to explain like these are the bad guys you know just know you know like trying to comfort the child and explain explain the situation like uh, similar like uh, like uh, you know like a cop would like uh, explain it to a ch child. Um, roll me insight. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm okay with that. Come on. Class of 20. Okay. So he kind of takes to your uh, explanation of what's going on. But beyond that, it seems like he's more, less concerned about, like, the the sort of confrontation here and the people that kind of barged in here and more concerned about something else and you know and of course the fact that you guys are covered in blood and everything but um as he's wailing you can see in his mouth that there's uh kind of a blackened looking molar in his mouth and it seems like if anything that's probably causing him more distress than anything right now hmm. um so the woman who these cultists were talking to will, first of all, back away hastily from the people with weapons who just barged in. She'll say, who are you? Where, Where's Antikios? Uh, the leader of the cult. Cult? Yes, you it, heard me correctly. Cult. This is a dentist's office. And it was the front for a cult. You can go through the back and see the corpses of the many, many awful things back there. Or we can just show you the guy's head. Uh, and Mungark, I'll hold the head up. Uh, the cultists will actually... One of them will kind of grab her by the shoulder. It's true. It's true. He... <sighs> Look. And he'll turn to the rest of you, addressing you at the same time he addresses uh, this... She's basically a secretary, or... Um... Yeah. Um... I love this happy, Ooh. like, little flute music while we show <laughs> we show a child a severed head. <laughs> da, 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 da. Antikios told us we we are all physicians. We all practice medicine in ver various forms to help people. He told us that he was founding a group to praise Farika, and that if we did these things, that it she would bestow us blessings and help us heal the injured. We have been sacrificing pigs and the like up until now and he he suddenly ordered that we bring in people. Possibly the worst group of people you could have brought in. Uh, he will he'll process that for a second. He'll say on the contrary, I am somewhat relieved that you three were the ones that we brought in. I. One of them will kind of chime in at that point, and uh, she, a woman cultist, yes, uh, will chime in. I didn't really want to go along with all this. The sacrifice it to the gods. The pigs, sheep, food, drink, whatever. That, That's normal. The people. It's, I was too afraid to say anything to him because he, he wields divine power where I, I'm just a healer. I didn't want to be smote by F Farika. Monkark chuckles. <laughs> no one in this room wields divine power. Well, Less I... this bobbling head. I sort of wield a little bit of divine power. But that's Me, nice yeah, I, 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 I kind of uh, <laughs> do the, the divine. Yeah, the uh, 
I, I say that in character. Is... Yeah, no, I I I, I kind of do. Uh, and Tikios' uh, secretary will chime in. He he was a cleric of Farika. He did have some healing gifts, but obviously not enough. She obviously kind of must... rattles the skull at him. She must have stopped listening. Now listen, we're gonna leave. You can clean up or do whatever you want to. We've all got appointments to carry out, I believe. And if there's a bounty on human sacrifice cults, then I'd like to collect. Uh, the secretary will chime in. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what's back there or down there, but I'm sure that the guard would be happy to reward you for your efforts. I, I just, uh, there's so many appointments that were made for today. What was Antikios thinking? Cancel and bring a mop. That's why you do your cult stuff on Tuesdays. You don't have as many appointments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, the cultists, with some relief, mostly that they're not going to be killed, but also because they didn't really want to go along with all the shit he was going to be doing, uh, will turn themselves in when the guards show up. Um, you will each be, of course, interviewed about what the hell went on because you're covered in blood. Um, that's fair. They won't disbelieve you. I mean, they'll go down there eventually and they'll see the, the leeches and the altar. Um, and yes, each of you will be paid a reward of 100 gold pieces. Yay! Yeah. I will take it. Incidentally, so the the guards that operate in Melitis are known as the Reverend Army. They're the, basically kind of like temple guards for uh, Heliod. So, given that there was like a human sacrifice about to be enacted in their city, uh, obviously greatly alarms them, so they're very thankful that you would have stopped that before it could even really start. Um, they will go on to investigate themselves, and they, they seem pretty confident that this was just a fringe cult and there's nothing else of this caliber going on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're going to leave it for that prologue. That's, that's the intro of how you guys met, and... You haven't killed each other yet. That's nice. Hey, you know we haven't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Gala said "ero us" out loud. So. Yeah, that'll be a can of worms for another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mogus is very like. Open or, er, Mungark is very open about his uh, worship of Mogus, and he's realizing now that maybe I should have chosen a name. That was a little bit different than <laughs> Mogus, but Mogus and Mungark sounds like a uh, like a bump that could rival Zach and uh, Zach and Borak, or like it sounds like the most Beavis and Butthead name ever. <laughs> like... Oh man! Well, that was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm I, I gotta say we usually don't do this well. Um, I, I think we did a, a quite a good job with actually like being in character for a lot of this shit. Did yeah, you like my? Did you like my half caveman, half uh, In intellectual? Uh, yeah. Well, it was like the voice I'm shooting for is somewhere between like idiot bodyguard and like uh, what's his face from wrestling? Uh, <laughs> fucking Randy Savage. Yeah, Randy Macho Savage. Macho Man, Randy <laughs> Savage. Now, let me tell you <laughs> something here, Mungar. We're gonna get a lot no of. Oh yeah. Now, Mogus oh, sees yeah, yeah. everything you lads do, and Mogus ain't happy, so he sent Mungar to take you out over here. Um, <laughs> my, my my voice is uh, basically uh, the Pharaoh's voice from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. <laughs> <laughs> my love of puns. I accidentally basically became Travis Willingham doing all this. You should be, um, what is it, Bakura instead? Yugi boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that doesn't fit Gallus at all. Uh, but, yeah, that was fun. That was a good job, man. I like it. Uh, if you guys want, we could get the uh, the setup for the adventure 
like we could actually go into the written content here, the professionally written content here, uh, before we break for tonight. That sounds good. Sure. So you guys will rest and drink or whatever it is you guys do to heal up. Um, and <laughs> literally just sit there and wait for Gallus. Yeah. Um. So, you are. You're in Melitis. Uh, it's the city of Jesus. It's the city of Jesus. I told city you my Jesus. god was the one in shit. <laughs> it is a city of 250,000 people. Uh, and that's the city and the surrounding farmland. 200,000. Um, 250,000. Ah, nice. Yeah, it's a big ass city. Uh, what you would expect of it, it's Theros, it's Greek themed, so this is all like marble temples, and the estates are marble and gleaming. Mm -hmm. uh, the poorer parts of town, of course, are like um, just plain stone and wood structures and stuff, but overall, beautiful city, big city. Um, Miletus is the polis of order, learning, magic, and progress. It is wealthy and orderly. A safe place for the intellectual arts to flourish. Not that yeah, you guys would be particularly Proggers, boys! <laughs> God. Let's go. Uh, so. The first place you guys will probably find yourselves in once you, you know, uh, take a breather from that whole thing would be the Street of Gods, which is kind of the main thoroughfare through the city. Uh, on which are most of the major temples. Uh, branching off from that, kind of in the, the center of town, is the Agora. The bustling marketplace that's thronged with traders, with their wares. Um, there's a podium in a corner of the square where there's a guy standing. He's in kind of lavish robes. And he sounds like he's shouting to a throng of people... Uh, opinions, and they're shouting things back at him. Uh, so yeah, you're, you find yourselves in the Agora. What do? So we've already. Uh... So the guy's just yelling opinions, opinions, and the guys are and the, the crowds are like things, things. Depends if you want to go up and actually listen. <laughs> no, but I'm that is the that. sense you're getting from a distance, at least. Opinions, things. Ah! I, too, have opinions. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, this is a nice little society thing. I mean, might as well. I feel like this is what, like, dudes do. All so. right. Uh, so, what it sounds like, as you get closer and you pay attention to this, it it seems mundane enough because there's a podium that's been sitting there, so it assume, presumably, especially since it's the seat of democracy and all, um... Yes, it is democratic society. Uh, this thing probably happens a lot. Uh, this guy, whose name you catch as being Dio. Uh, <laughs> Fucking way. Oh, yeah, shit. Stop it. No, um, it sounds like it was a random, random cult. And we walk up. <laughs> we walk up to him. And we walk up to him, and he's like, "Oh, you're approaching me." Uh, anyway. Uh, it sounds like he's debating the point that there was someone recently exiled from the city, and he feels it was unjust, and 99.9% .9 of the crowd feels, no, he was he blasphemed and he should be kicked out of the city he was so, kicked out of the city and you should be kicked out of the city for thinking so and you're stupid and blah 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 So, having there are a lot of people thing. here? Uh, there's probably about uh, 16 people who are gathered around listening to him and shouting at him. Most All people right. here, most people here are milling about their business, but a few people have stopped here to shout at this guy. Would you say that he's mass debating? You know, there's only like 16 of them, so I wouldn't say it's mass. He's definitely uh, group debating. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's debating with a group. Yeah. I hate. I hate this. I, never I, I usually I guys. usually masturbate by myself. I never want to play games with you guys ever again. <laughs> well, that's He's just debating rude. in public. Oh. 
It's okay, though. He's staying behind the podium. We can have a discussion about that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> we could debate it. <laughs> there goes any chance we had of, like, a nice little story. <laughs> this is going to be mass debating now. That's fine. <laughs> oh, well, God. we are in, like... Greek I mean, fantasy company, Greek times. Like, yeah. No, the little like you know, I don't. I don't think the Greek. Is this what I'm gonna? Is this what I'm gonna have in my Google search now? Did the Greeks just <laughs> just whack it good in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> like title he, for our episode one: <laughs> whacking it good. No God. <laughs> whack did, did you did you remember I, uh, I taking it to by the streets? Um, oh, good. Wikipedia has a history of masturbation page. I'm gonna sh save that one for later. Um, so, can I can I like just listen in close with like you know, Gallus's arms crossed? So he's like he's he's like totally interested in hearing what it's about, but he's trying to act cool about it. Yeah, this is basically daily occurrences here in Melitis. Um, spirit of debate. This is a democratic society, so they're more than happy to talk about their politics in the open like this. Mm. Like um, whether it's okay to jack off in public. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds like Dio's friend had... Jacked off in public, that's why he got ex- <laughs> God damn it! It sounds like Dio's friend had expressed certain opinions about the gods and whether or not they care about people. And so the, the Council of Twelve had, you know, uh, voted to exile him. And so he was. And he feels there's a bit of injustice because he was just expressing an opinion. But the people are all shouting, no, no, he would have brought disaster upon us. It's one thing to have opinions and stuff, but to, uh, like, publicly uh, express opinions like that about the gods is just inviting disaster. So Tyler is totally on board with the dude who got exiled, but... Gallus is kind of with the crowd. If, if the gods are like physical, tangible beings um, that do actively express their favor and whatnot in different ways, then like, yeah, fucking don't be a dick. It's like, <laughs> not our fault that they fucking like smite us for shit. Everyone it's around the time play. that uh, he ducks a sandal that's thrown at him. No fucking way. Yeah. That you guys notice you're being watched intently. Um, there's an olive-skinned woman who's just been leaning against a column, watching you. And as she notices that you notice her watching, uh, she'll begin moving languidly, weaving between bystanders like a shark parting a school of fish. Uh, can I get wait? What, uh... Okay. Tyler would get this, but for the other two of you, could I get an insight roll? Ten. I got an eight. Isaac, you're gonna like the thing I put in general. Okay, everyone except for... <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, man. And Everyone what... except for Mundark notices uh, just the way that this woman carries herself. Uh, she kind of has her head on a swivel, but she doesn't seem actively uh, concerned about anything. She stands tall. She has a very athletic build. Everything about her suggests that she lives by the sword. This is definitely a woman who is a soldier by trade. But she doesn't appear to be armed. So, even unarmed, she exudes a confidence usually backed up by a sharp blade. But she smiles at you three, and she looks friendly, even warm. Hail, she calls, before sliding into your group as if she'd reserved a place there. You look like you have time to waste. You're looking for an afternoon's work. Well, that depends who's hiring. My name is Melandra. I have the pleasure of serving the Council of Twelve, and I find myself in need of some competent professional. Council of Twelve is a big deal, right? 
They are the governing body of the city of Polis, pardon me, of Melitis. So they are a fairly big deal, yes. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you good, Josh? You sound like you want to say something. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something else. Sorry, I got distracted. Are you debating over there? I am mass <laughs> debating over here. <laughs> um. <clears throat> well, I mean. Well, uh, Gallus is going to look at the other two and be like, well. Gainful employment is, is something that may aid me in, in my quest to understand you surface dwellers better. So gains. I win. Yeah, gains. All right. <laughs> uh, Mungark is like, oh, I don't know anything about these 12 and, uh, Honestly, I'm not sure I could care less. That is okay. I don't need you to know about the 12. I just need a task done discreetly and quickly. What sort of task uh, are we talking about? Oh, it's simple, really. Uh, you are to visit the Temple of Ifara. And this is on the authority of the 12, I should add. Remove a sacred relic from the temple and bring it. Assuming I don't hear any uh, gossip about it. In the next few days, I'll pay you each 100 gold, which you can collect from me here in the Agora. From what, I'm ga from what I'm gathering, the the Council of Twelve, uh, they have pretty good uh, pull in this city. Why is it an issue of discretion? Is, isn't their world word law? Yes, and it is on their authority that I do this, but... And she will look around quickly to ensure that you're not being overheard. Um, there's a prophecy that this relic needs to be removed from Miletus, and if it is not, an enemy will take it by force. And, and you're right. And you're right, but why? But why can't you? We just. Why can't we just walk in and be like, hey, give us a thing. Council of Twelve said so. If none can remove it discreetly in due time, I fear it may have to come to that. And but you're, and you're I don't just, want to force their hand. And you're just bringing this to three strangers you meet out in the middle of uh, the debate square and not some of the highly trained soldiers that you've got lying around all here. You act under the authority of the Seven, but this seems suspect at best. The Reverend Army are too conspicuous. I need outsiders to help me with this, and she'll make a show of sizing you guys up, even though she's already done this. You're certain. You three look good, but I... I can get others to do this, if you will not. Well, <clears throat> I don't know if you looked at the three of us, but discretion isn't exactly our point of uh, point of excess. But I'm certainly not one to turn down a, an opportunity for a day's wage, more than a day's wage. He'll look at the two of you guys. Yeah, Mungo. Like I said, I'm in. Mongart can comply for now. Yeah. Gallus will nod then. What's this relic we're looking for then? She will smile thinly. This relic is the Mask of Aino. And that will be a... What roll? Let me see. B -b 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 where the fuck is it? Uh, history or performance? Your choice. Ooh, lovely. No bonus, but I got a 15. Let's see here. Performance is a 2. I got a 4. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Isaac, buddy. Uh, sure. I was debating if I wanted to do even do it. Debating over there? Oh, come nah. on. Man. Yeah. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, again, everyone except for the Minotaur recalls the legend. <laughs> In ages long past, when mortals prayed the gods to life, Erebos, the shadow, who is of course the god of the underworld, had two lovers. I know was the goddess of the doom that awaits all empires, the end of magic and the grind of time. Elpis was the god of repose at the end of grueling journeys, the spark from which magic blooms, and wayward souls coming home. The three complemented each other and could have been happy together, but this was not the path Theros took. I know and Elpis both fell in the war against the Titans. Grieving Erebos created two artifacts to remember his lovers, masks shaped in their visages. All the grief and despair at his loss, he poured into the mask shaped as Aino. All his warm memories of their time together, he crafted into the mask shaped as Elpis. Then, unable to bear to look at them, he sealed the masks away. At the height of Arconia's power, that empire of virtue which held Theros in its merciless grip, the tyrant Agnomachos set out to find the masks. Legends diverge whether the tyrant never found the masks, or if heroic Kaneos and Tiro returned the masks to the underworld after they defeated the Archon. Either way, Erebos now feared the masks falling into the wrong hand. He broke the Elpis mask into five pieces and scattered them across Theros. Some pieces he hid where only gods may tread. Others he gifted to Theros' greatest heroes. And yet others he gave to dread monsters to guard. The Aino mask, which resisted all efforts to destroy it, he gave to the goddess Ephara to keep safe. Uh, the ages passed... And now Xenagos, Planeswalker, and Stranger King sought the masks to facilitate his rise to godhood. He ultimately abandoned this quest, having found a different way to ascension, and was killed by the hero Elspeth. Elspeth? Elspeth. Yeah, Elspeth. Elspeth. His knowledge of the masks, however, remains. Callisto, Xenagos' former lieutenant, seeks to follow in her old master's footsteps. Footstep? Footsteps. Should be fucking whatever. She raised an army and now casts greedy eyes to the masks. The heroes must stop her. I like uh, it. So... I like how that went from like a lore dump to like reading the back cover of the adventure like in midway through. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so uh that's what you know about the masks. They're apparently a pretty fucking big deal. And she wants the I know mask. So, pretty big deal. Pretty uh, big sounding job. And she said, it's in the temple of El Fara. Not exactly a small thing you're asking, but alright. It's a simple enough job, and it, the Council of Twelve wishes it done. It's for the safety of the city. Well... I had, no, I had nothing better to do. Truly, I didn't. Let's go. Might stand. as well. Let's go visit the temple. Uh, before you leave, she will give you a token. Uh, it's about the size and consistency of a poker chip, made from uh, ceramic. Uh, all the information it gives me is that it's blue and glazed. <laughs> But um, I'm going to say that it has a border, and along the border are 12 columns, which would indicate that the bearer of this token, the token of the 12, is an authorized agent of the Council of 12. Oh, hell yeah. We just get to walk up and flash our badge. Pretty much, yeah. She has that too. Use this. Nice. 
Seems simple enough. Let's just go be discreet and grab ourselves a mask. Maybe on the mean way. Maybe on the, uh, on the way over we can fill you in on a couple things, he says to, uh, to Klonos, the, the confused. <laughs> yeah, it would be, it would be great to, uh, learn of surface, surface customs. I appreciate it, friend. So, Melandra looks, uh, happy enough with this. She nods. She says, remember, bring it to me here in the Agora in three days' time. Right. Well, yeah, then we will do that. I assume next time. She yep. will turn and leave from the Agora, leaving the three of you holding this token. And considering that you're about to go grab the mythical Mask of I Know. And for tonight, that is where we'll leave it. It's interesting that she oh. says this requires discretion, but she also gave us something that can let us just walk <laughs> up and do that. And also, she's like, bring it to me in three days. which <laughs> So that implies automatically that this is not going to be the simplest thing on planet Earth or planet Theros. But hey, welcome to D and D. <laughs> yay! And we took eight. So, we took eight long rests because he kept on spraining his ankle. <laughs> so, you guys can level up to level two now. Yay! Hey. And we'll pick this up in you know two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. Yes. Right. That means that means I get magic. You get spells. I spells. get. I get do more hit. And, you know, do more hit is just the best. Magic. Oh, and I get to roll a d10. So, I'm Fun glad we at least got to the actual uh, written content, so you don't think this adventure is just about foiling dentists. I mean, you know, I have, uh -oh. I have a high amount of dental anxiety, so, like, I'm down with foiling dentists. Make no mistake. Guess whose well, health just doubled. Did he roll a max? Yeah. Nice. I rolled nine, so it was one under max. But I get not only do I get plus three from my con, I get plus two because I took the tough. So that's an extra fourteen health for me, which I will gladly take. You know who is health? Who else's health just doubled? All the encounters. Woo! No. <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 tracks. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> mm, all right. So. Okay, well, thank you for DMing, uh, and thank you for uh, finding that adventure. That's uh, that's wild. I like it. Yeah, man, it it's got a lot. Uh, I like it. Having read ahead, obviously, I Ooh, yeah, I right. like how that it seems to play out, and I'm excited to see how you guys think of it. Yeah, fuck yeah, uh, dude. Yeah, for sure. Let me go ahead and uh, notate down action surge real quick. And yeah, like you said, we will pick this up in about two weeks. I'm going to end the stream now.